Hey guys, welcome to this week's Sunday Spin, where we take the music that we're spinning uh, this week. I'm Terry, and I am here with Brisa, um, with Brisa Beers and Mints. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for um, having me. I'm excited. So we started talking about a month, I want to say about a year ago, um, kind of during the pandemic, it kind of yeah. slow time for us. And how I found you is actually a really cool way. It was kind of through a... You know, you were putting on a show that involved bands from all over the world. And I thought that was just amazing because we were kind of talking about putting on camp. We had announced it and you do something that's just just something completely out of the picture. And, you know, you kind of took this pandemic time and like turned it into magic. So can you talk about what the, I guess it's called global pandemic? Yeah, we, um... We, so I work with a, a promotion company called In The Fast Lane Records. Um, so it started off with three of us. Um, so Lee and Adam and myself. Um, and through COVID, we wanted to make sure that musicians just had an outlet and something to do basically. Um, and just to keep them motivated through, through lockdowns because we had so many over here. Um, so we started small, we started an Australian wide um, stream and it was called Isolation, where we did every state in Australia. Um, and the response was just incredible. It went over for two days on a weekend um, and everyone just loved it. So we decided why not, let's just do it worldwide because we knew not just us through COVID and lockdown, but all over the world, people were just experiencing, you know, um, a lot of depression um a lot of musicians were quite sad um not being able to tour and a lot of musicians it was their you know bread and butter it was the only thing that they could do um so we wanted to help as many people as we could so we went worldwide um and we're up to our third global pandemic the last one that we did had 50 bands from about 16 different countries <laughs> and it takes about three months to prep and, and organize it all um but the end result is just so worth it. Like just seeing bands meeting each other from all over the world, you know, watching each other's sets, like commenting and just bands as well. They never thought about traveling to Australia or Brazil or, you know, Italy to do a tour. And you've got all these bands, you know, networking and connecting with each other and saying, hey guys, do you want to do a tour together? We're going to come over when it's all over. Um, and just making new friends and, and all of that networking was just absolutely wonderful. And the response was just amazing. And it went over for two days and um, we're about to plan out our next one. So hopefully that will be sometime soon. Um, but we've had some amazing artists like Pat Decline uh, from The Decline, uh, Mr. Chuck Coles, he was on there as well. Um, he was gracious enough to do two of our global pandemics actually. Um, so he's just an amazing dude um and we've just we've had so and just the smaller bands as well um they've just yes yeah, blew us away absolutely blew us away um and we've just made really great friends from it as well so it's just been amazing it's an incredible thing yeah yeah um we kind of work in the same aspect that we do work with bands um and help put on shows and put the word out and what really amazes me is the commodity of it all um you yes. know you really come out with making friends out of deal you really make connections i can't count the amount of bands that have you know toured later on and like you know have like you know maintained a friendship so i really think that's such a cool thing to see and be a part of too as well absolutely we're just all one big community um we're all on the same level um you know, it's it's this community of no one is bigger than anyone else. It's there. Everyone is about music and their passion for music and and wanting to help each other. And I think it's the one positive thing that came out of the pandemic was, you know, just everyone networking together. And it's just been fantastic, like meeting you guys um, and, and so many bands. I, I, I just want to go traveling and just meet everyone now. I'm just so excited about it. So um, but it's just a fantastic thing. It really is. Yeah. Now I do have to talk about the one logistic because we are 14 hours apart. Um, <laughs> <We are. laughs> In sunny <So>, Australia. <laughs> here it's like bedtime, yeah. but you know, um, I can't imagine having 16 different countries. Like, you know, just to plan two countries, but we are far apart. I'm in Canada, you're in Australia. Um, but 16, girl, like I don't. <laughs> 
time zones are quite the challenge um, and doing the set list as well, making sure that they their fans are going to have a good time to watch them um, as well as fans over here being able to watch them at a decent time as well. So um, the set list um, and Lee Robinson, who um, is in Jones, he does an amazing job on the set list. Like I'm out with time zones. I'm like hundred, like that's all him. <laughs> and it takes days of preparation for him to figure it all out. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a big, it's a big feat. The time zones are a killer. That's, for sure. <laughs> that's two months work. <laughs> yeah. Just the yeah, time. I, zones. Basically. Yeah. I do not doubt that. Um, <laughs> also you mentioned the drones. I love them. Their EP is just, oh my goodness. It's amazing. So, so good. good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I just want to put out a quick shout yeah. out. Um, <laughs> now you do have some shows coming up. Um I do, yeah. I've got um I've got uh with Jones, we've got a show coming up in May. Um we've got two shows. So we've got a band called um Take Us to Vegas. Um they're coming back and they're only doing two shows with us in May. Um one at Eleven Dive Bar and one at the Sunshine Coast and one at the Woolly Mammoth in Brisbane. Um, and they've also got supports, The Bloods, you've got Ocean Shores, Awaken Time as well. Very metalcore um, kind of lineup, but they are just amazing bands. And we're just so excited about these two shows that we've got coming up. Um, it's probably our biggest shows that we've got coming up. Um, we've got a few more in the works, but we still haven't finalized lineups and things like that. But yes, May is our next big ones, basically. Yeah. I'm very excited to see yeah. and hear how it went. Um, but yeah, uh, we are also here to find out what we're spinning this week. And so I'm very excited because I kind of, you know, took a sneak peek before we started recording. But uh, who are you spinning this week? <laughs> I am spinning uh, Flynn Japanese. Um, I've got their vinyl there, their latest album, uh, which came out in October last year. Um, I just fucking love it. Um, it's called Fucking Woo. Um, if anyone doesn't know the name, uh, please find them. They're amazing. Um, it's just an incredible album. And if anyone knows the Flying Japanese, they're just so high energy, just that dirty punk, um, very kind of 90s kind of punk. Um, they're just amazing. Like it starts off just as soon as you start listening to the album, it starts off with this cool little riff at the start was the very first song, uh, Brand New Day, which is about depression, but it's such a high energy song, but with just super sad lyrics in it. <laughs> but it's it just grabs you as soon as you start listening to it. It's um, an incredible album, front to back. It's one of those albums that you just love every song, which is a very rare thing these days. Um, but I just, I adore them. It's, it's a great album. I love it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so for this week, I actually picked hot water music. Um, they just oh. came out. I, I know. Yes. Right? Um, they just came out Love with Chuck. Floyd last I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, last <laughs> month it is 12 songs, about 40 minutes long, and it opens up with another break, and right off the hop, it's Chuck. You know, it's that yes. beautiful, smoky, smooth, almost silky gravelly voice. Yeah. Yes. You no, know, it grabs you. It really pulls you in. And the song, um, much like you, is the album itself. I found it to be very um, despair into hope. And I found mm. the whole album from front to back was kind of like a story. The cadence of the album was really well put together. It almost felt like I was reading a novel um, through that. song. And I just, you know, it really grabbed you in. Um, the first song, you know, I really connected with it because I'm not a musician. So uh, things I do outside of, you know, my normal work and stuff, like in music, I kind of feel that imposter syndrome. Like, how can I be so lucky to be like, especially with camp, setting up a camp and meeting up these with these musicians and talking to the beautiful people that I'm talking to and, you know, just getting to meet everybody. And, you know, eventually that song is about having your friends draw you in and take close and having the people that you love lift them up and allowing them to do so. And I thought that was just a beautiful story. Now, yeah. Chuck doesn't sing this album by himself. Um, no, Chris he doesn't. Willard. Yeah. Chris Willard is fantastic. Um, the next song I'm gonna pick is Turn the Dial because it features him and 
I just find it so catchy. It's just such a beautiful song. I really connect with it. You know, just being stuck, especially Canadian winter. Um, yeah. You're soon to see <laughs> experience that for yourself, sadly. But, um, you know, you just feel that the despair, especially these last few years. You know, this album really kind of summed up these last few years and just mm. being bummed out and just not wanting to keep going and then just you know taking the time and really you know finding the drive inside of you and pushing out and going through it's those chunky guitars it's that yeah. beautiful post hardcore sound also has a bit of melodic and a bit of hard rock i completely dig it i recommend it for everybody and with that i guess it brings to our shout outs um we shouting out this week um, I am shouting out as well. Um, I'll, I'll quickly add with Flinger Pennies. There's two particular songs on this album. Um, is Good Little Taxpayer. Um, something about the bass line and the backing vocals in that song is just really cool. Um, it's it's definitely a song uh, that you can relate to. Just about you know you going to your everyday job and you know being a good little taxpayer, doing all the right things as a citizen. Um, and it's it's just it's fucking and I've said it before it's so punchy and it's just it just grabs you as well um, and another song as well is called Asshole Aunt as well <laughs> um, it's just a fun song it's one of those songs that you're just going to dance around to when you're by yourself in your house it's just um, Jodie's vocals in it as well are just absolutely she's a great vocalist but absolutely incredible and I've seen her perform this song live as well it's she does it she performs live amazingly all the time anyway but this song in particular it's just so high energy and so fucking entertaining and the drums and the guitars on this whole album amazing absolutely incredible and the recording quality is just superb like it's it's a great album um but my shout outs um as well for this week um is no quarter they're a skate punk band in um nor uh, in new south wales um and they're releasing a new album on the 29th of april called fear and loathing on the pacific highway they just released one song off the album called cry for attention they're your typical skate punk um they're just incredible dudes um in general and they this album it's been years since their last album i think 2003 was their last release um so this is just going to be such an incredible and exciting album. So the 29th of April, they're releasing on all the platforms, no quarter. Um, so definitely, if you like your skate punk, check them out. They're good dudes. They're good, good songs. The whole album just, I've had it. It's good. Yeah, I like um, it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's such a, that resurgence. I almost feel like we're going through kind of like a huge like second like reawakening of like, I feel that like, yeah. like it's just so exciting i've been saying it for a little while now because you just it's coming back you guys you know it is, is like, it's kind of like I think, wave, uh, or six wave i don't know what wave they're on anymore but <laughs> <laughs> i feel like that um that real blink 182 influence is very prominent coming with a lot of these new um pop punk melodic punk bands that are coming out um i hear a lot of blink 182 sort of influences um it was kind of they laid dormant for a while and then all of a sudden it's just like we're influenced by blink 182 i'm just like you so are like you sound like you can tell like and um i think yeah it's definitely coming around again and i'm super excited about it anything sort of 90s punk i'm down for i love it yeah. Oh, I'm such a 90s skate punk bug like it <laughs> bit me and i just never let go and you know um, my shout out, it's actually our music video for today, is Bring On The Storm and they are a beautiful melodic band. I really love, very strong, very powerful. Their song, uh, single called Decompose. They have a yeah. few things coming up. They're from Calgary. Um, so they have a new single out on April 25th. So make sure you check that out. And they are opening for Lagwagon, one of my- Oh favorite, my gosh. Yes. Eight bands That's out cool. there. Um, on, I think it's May 19th. So make sure you go check them out. Uh, Brisa, I love you. Thank you so much for joining me. It was amazing. And we Thank will you see you for having you. me. Oh, that's sweet. Bye. <laughs>